Hello everyone and this is my review for WWE NXT on August 31st 2016 and well this is their first show back at full sale and pretty much more storyline driven or a potential storyline driven uh, show since the TakeOver Brooklyn special. Uh, they started it off with a Samoa Joe medical update where uh, the trainer was telling William Regal that he was not going to clear Joe for the, quite some time because there was, outside of just the dislocated jaw, and, uh, he had a bunch of other injuries that were not disclosed, so he was not going to clear him at this time. Uh, I like the look that Joe gives William Regal as he just gets up and walks away. Uh, I thought it came off. Uh, I thought it came off rather well in that sense. And it makes you feel like you're going to see something from Samoa Joe here in the very near future. See what they decide to do with that. Uh, first up, they have a match with Ty Dillinger and Buddy Murphy. So you have Ty Dillinger up against Wesley Blake. Now you had uh, him going up against Buddy Murphy, and. Uh, so basically he's uh, fighting Blake and Murphy in the terms of one-on-one -on -one matches. But I like how they're playing off storyline is that Murphy wants to try to one-up Wesley Blake in every sense of the word. So he, ch he challenges uh, Ty Dillinger to a match. Um, it was a... It was an all right match. There was a couple of hiccups here and there inside the match. You had a top rope spot that was kind of... That came off a little bit awkward. And you'll actually see that in a couple of these matches on this show. That In the terms of... Quality. This was not necessarily one of the better NXTs, even in the terms of promo work. There was a couple good promos uh, to go along with everything, but there was also one that I was not a very good big fan of, and I'll get to that in a few moments. Uh, but the match with Ty Dillinger and Tom, and uh, Wesley, uh, not Wesley Blake, that was last week. Buddy Murphy uh, was a decent match. Like I said, there was one little hiccup there. Um, uh, it looks like it's time that they're going to try to build up Ty Dillinger again. Uh, I, I feel like this is going to be the case a lot right now with NXT. They just brought up a bunch of guys who were a little bit more over at NXT, time, uh, over with NXT, and now they're on the main roster. So now they're th this is the rebuild of NXT at this point. So you're beginning to see more and more. Uh, new talent come out there. The, like with the second match, you had Steve Cutler versus Kenneth Crawford. Uh, I thought a pretty good, uh, a pretty good match here from both guys. Uh, Character-wise, we know nothing about them because it's only like they're uh, for Steve Cutler. I think it's only like the second or third time he's shown up on NXT, and this is like the first time I remember seeing Kenneth Crawford. If I'm uh, not mistake. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I could be in that in that case. I thought I saw some. Pr uh, I, I thought I saw some pretty good moves there. Both of them are kind of new blood, so I'm giving them a little bit of the ass. Uh, a little bit of a leeway on the aspect of, you know, they're newer. We don't really know much about them yet. They were able to show off some good moves in the ring, so not bad match in, in that sense. Up next was the Hideo Itami promo on Austin Aries. This is the promo I'm talking about. I did not like this promo. I, I thought it just came off way too... It, it didn't come off flowing in any way. Like the words were coming out and the proper words were coming out of uh, Atami's mouth. It, it just didn't feel like there was any real fire or passion. It, it felt like he was just reading it right off the script. Off, like they had a cue card right there off camera, and that was how he was reading it. And it, it, it did not come off as a good promo. I thought it was a rather poor one. Uh, one of the few times I'll ever say anything bad about Hideo Itami. I like him, but this promo was not good in my in my in my thought. That's just my opinion. It just wasn't a good promo. Uh, up next, you had Noe Jose going up against Angelo Dawkins, who apparently is still stirring the pot of something. I don't know what yet. Um, I don't think anybody knows what yet. But uh, you had uh, both of them going up there. Noe Jose pulls off the mat, uh, pulls off the win here. And again, there was a, like a couple miscues here and there that you saw, the, kind of nitpicking on it. And the, and like I said, this is a, NXT's in that rebuild area. And I think we're going to be seeing a potential of maybe a few hiccups here and there in the matches. Matches might not flow as well as, um, as one would expect in, in that case. 
Uh, you had a backstage promo that was about to start with uh, Andres Cien Almas, and Austin Aries just immediately interrupts him and cuts a promo on um, cuts a promo about you know how every time he does something, someone tries to steal a spotlight. Like he shows his greatness, someone steals the spotlight from him. Goes to Hideo Tommy what he did at NXT Takeover Brooklyn. So he said, "I'm just going to take your spotlight." Uh, for, uh, with uh, Cien Almas there. Uh, Cien Almas challenges him to a match. So basically, uh, we're going to get a match next week with Austin Aries and Andres Cien Almas. So, uh, should be an interest, uh, that should be an interesting match. I think that one will be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, so we'll see how everything goes off there. Up next in the uh, in actual matches, you have Liv Morgan going up against Aaliyah. And, well, like I said, uh, again, new blood. Uh, we've seen Liv Morgan in the past, but now they're kind of, again, building up a new women's division because you had Alexa Bliss, Carmella, and now Bailey up on the main roster. So you're starting to, you know, see other people go. I thought they did a fine. Uh, I thought they did a fine match here. It wasn't. Uh, it was a pretty good. It was a pretty good match here and there. I was not a fan of the finish though. That spin. Uh, that spinning roundhouse kick that Liv Morgan does, just it does not look good. Uh, I hope that she comes up with some kind of other finisher because, like I said, that, it, it just comes off like she does not connect the move at all in, in any way. It did not look good at all in this match. But otherwise, relatively decent match from uh, from both of them. And we'll be interested to see how they continue building up the new women's division inside of NXT with uh, basically now... Uh, with well, in the terms of people who you would expect to be able to do really good in the ring, you have Oscar and Ember Moon, or AKA Athena. Uh, so it's time to see what the other women can do, and uh, like how well they play off and how well they can put together matches. I thought they put put together a pretty decent match here. I just did not like the finishing move. That was basically it. Uh, so hopefully. Uh, hopefully a new finisher for Liv at some point in time, or they, or she starts making it look like she connects a little bit more with that roundhouse kick, because it comes off looking rather weak in, in that sense. Um, you also had a backstage promo that started with No Way's, No Way Jose. Uh, he got interrupted by Bobby Roode, inter, uh, who entered, walked off, said nice hair, and just walks away. So, uh, inclining that you have... Awesome. Um, you have No Way Jose going up against Bobby Roode sometime here in the very near future. So we'll see how everything goes. Up next was the final segment of the night, which was Shinsuke Nakamura uh, and basically just a solo promo. Uh, you know, celebrating his victory from, uh, from the NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Uh, the promo, the, the, first of all, one of the longer ones he's done here in NXT. Um... I thought he did a relatively good job with with uh, with the promo itself. Um, uh, if there's people who think he's going to have bad English or something in that sense, he actually he he spoke very well here. I thought he did a really good job with the promo. Um, the only weird thing was and was is that like how often do you see them end a show with just a solo promo? That's the weird thing there. It just it comes off a little bit weird. You almost expect some kind of extra extra interaction or um, an interference with, from someone in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but you got nothing. It was just Sh uh, Shinsuke Nakamura cutting a promo in the ring, celebra uh, celebrates having the title win, and and walks off uh, walks off, and that's how they end the show. So like I said overall, you can definitely tell. At this point, especially since uh, a lot of the bigger talent went up to the main roster with the draft and after SummerSlam, you can tell that NXT is definitely in the rebuilding process. You can tell that in this show here. Um, uh, there are some, like I said, there are some points I thought were you know relatively good or at least decent. But some points that like they weren't good at all uh, in some way, shape, or form. So like I said, NXT's in that rebuild time. They've got to see what they can do with this talent that's down there to keep people interested in this portion of the product because a lot of those guys are now 
up on the main roster, and more than likely you'll be losing uh, Samoa Joe at some point too. So you're going to have another guy who's going up to the main roster that's kind of like a mainstay or a big name that's down there. So we'll see what they ha- what they what they can do and what these guys have been doing at the Performance Center. Uh, for quite some time, and we'll see how they come off on TV here in the very near future. And before I leave, I can't believe I forgot this one. The Tommaso Ciampa, that Tommaso Ciampa segment with uh, the Revival, you uh, you had them showing the end of the match at TakeOver Brooklyn, where Gargano gets his knee injured and has to tap out and lose. You had a quick promo from Tommaso Ciampa. I thought he was doing uh, relatively... uh, I thought his promo at that point was doing relatively well. He gets interrupted by the Revival, and they just start brawling all over the place. And this was one of those intense brawls. Uh, This was a thoroughly enjoyable spot. That's why I'm actually shocked I missed it before the end here. Uh, So... Uh, again, like I thought, this was a, it, it. It was like it started off as a brawl, and then it kind of went into a beatdown. I like the aspect of Tommaso. Like after the revival had beaten down Tommaso Ciampa once, they get on the microphone and start cutting a promo, and Ciampa just gets in the ring uh, again to kind of just say, "Hey, you haven't finished me yet. You haven't finished me." You know, showing a little bit more toughness, and then gets hit with a shatter machine as they go off. Um, again. Very good segment. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and we'll see where they go with everything here. If they continue on with this uh, Ciampa, Gargano, and Revival uh, storyline, or if they go in a different route in some way, shape, or form uh, down the road here. So we'll see how everything goes. And again, guys, like I said, uh, like I said before, outside of segments, like a few really good segments in there, you could definitely tell NXT's in the rebuild process. We'll see how it go- we'll see how it goes and see how it continues to uh, continues to show throughout the uh, upcoming weeks. And that is my review for WWE NXT this week. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.